Hi there, uh, I'm AJ Carter, uh, one of the directors of the Away Kenyan Lands film. Uh, I was the cinematographer, drone, still photographer, uh, all of that business. Hey everyone, I'm Lauren Bogart. I'm the director of campaigns and special projects at the Center for Western Priorities. Uh, be, through this effort, I get to play the role of a film producer. That's not my day job, but did a lot of the behind the scenes planning and logistics and then um, go to person uh, production assistant on the ground. Hi there, I'm Kate Gretzinger. I'm the communications manager at the Center for Western Priorities and I um, conducted the interviews that you see in this film and also helped with some of the production work, um, assisting Lauren and scouting locations and um, finding people to feature. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that with that in mind, that was one of the biggest things that I definitely took away myself from the film of definitely asking any questions from like the filmmaking side of it is one thing, of course, but I also think it's it's a little bit more significant to actually approach this to talk about less about the actual filmmaking process, but the process for approaching the advocacy involved. And especially since that this is just one film of many that you guys uh, have worked on and are working on of putting a spotlight on these uh, these very valuable and ecologically significant areas and culturally significant areas and bringing that attention to um, just different parts of the country and, and members of even those local regions that people that they may or may not have heard about. Like I know at least in uh, in, in our case, being an Oregonian, I don't even know how many people knew about the canyon lands beforehand. So my, my first question in regards to that is, what was the process like to initiate that uh, communication and outreach, or at least selecting and uh, determining the canyon lands as a location that you guys want to check out and put a spotlight on? So again, I'll jump in, but Kate would love your thoughts as well. We had previously worked with the folks at the Oregon Natural Desert Association to feature the Greater Hart Sheldon region, which is also in Southeast Oregon. It's a identified pronghorn migration corridor between two national wildlife refuges. So we'd already worked with them and they had mentioned on previous occasions that this, that if you really are impressed by the Greater Hart Sheldon, just wait till you see what's going on in the Oahe Canyon lands. Yeah, absolutely. Did you guys, AJ, Kate, did you guys have any additional thoughts? Sure. Um, I'll just add that this area is one of the largest um, contiguous landscapes in the Western U.S. Um, it's just a massive roadless area that's, you know, really important to wildlife and also just one of the only places you can really get away from um, all humanity and really see every single star in the sky. So um, that made it made it a really easy choice to go here, and um, it contains some of the most incredible scenery I've ever seen. And I used to live in Southern Utah, so that's saying a lot. Uh, I, yeah. I always think it's weird. I really sorry. Uh, AJ, I was going to say I was I was going to echo what what the two girls said there as well in terms of we were there for one of the first films that we actually did was out there uh, for Hart Shelton and I was just blown away. I'd never been, I'd been to Oregon for filming before but just uh, uh, more um, close to the CBD but not really out CBD Australia, closer to the business districts out there. I had never really been out into the wilderness and just to go out through the heart shield and, uh, and, and, and was absolutely incredible. So when we got the call that, Hey, listen, there's another spot out here that you guys should come out and come out and visit. I was just thrilled that we were going back out to Oregon. I just couldn't, I would, I couldn't, I couldn't pack my bags fast enough. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people, or at least the stereotype that Oregon has, if it has any stereotypes among it as a state culturally or just iconography is of course being very forested very like you know beaver oriented rainy but out of course in southern oregon and especially southeastern oregon and just from that whole like basically third or half of the state uh for how few people go out there it's really unknown as such a uh locus point of natural beauty and such a diversity of landscapes and it's something that uh even me myself growing up, I didn't know about until later on in my adulthood that I started looking around and, and 
uh, traveling more and seeing that, wow, just right in my backyard is such amazing features and, and places of wildlife and ecology and just the amount of like wonder that's there and uh, driving through or just traveling through just this, the, the more, even the more well-traveled parts of Eastern Oregon feels like you're on another planet. So it's just incredible. It's, 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 it's funny that you say that because I always typically, uh, when we go to do a shoot, I like to look up, not necessarily stock footage, but I, t I like to look up YouTube or Vimeo or, or previous uh, editorial pieces that have been done on certain parts of the land. And we were legitimately filming in some parts that we just, there was no footage out there at all of some of these areas. Like we, I'm not saying that we were the first ones to film in some of these areas, but we couldn't find anything on some of these areas. So we're really proud and I guess privileged as well that those lands are still there and available for us to capture. Yes. And it's, it's one that I think, uh, especially across the board, there is, it is so vast so surprisingly vast and that of course you guys may or may not have found like or have recorded footage of places that have never been recorded before or maybe even in one or two films that have been shot there maybe either as some other documentary or I know that there have been a few narrative films over relatively like past few decades that have been shot out in that eastern Oregon area just because it is so stark uh, but just between that all the different uh, features of uh, of Southern Oregon or Southeastern Oregon, and especially the Canyon lands. My next question is, what was, if there is any particular moments as part of the shoot or the scouting, or just the process of, of gathering this, this intersection of culture, ecology, uh, and, and, uh, culture, ecology, and activism and, and advocacy and, and protection of this process of gathering all that together to make this film and even others, what was that like? I will hop in. Um, so it's definitely a challenge. It's a huge landscape. And one of our first challenges was simply just figuring out how, where, where to stay. Um, at first we were going to camp for like four or five days, but turns out you need a lot of power to power drones and cameras and everything. So camping started to make less sense. Um, so there were, there were the logistics and then getting people out there. Um, some of the people we filmed didn't, weren't, um, residents of the region. They lived, you know, a few hours away, um, or even, you know, I think some many hours away. So just getting everyone there was a challenge. And then, um, one of our perennial challenges on the, these series is, on this series is getting wildlife footage. It's, it's really hard to, uh, capture wildlife, you know, you either see it or you don't, you can't really plan for it. Um, so there was a fun moment on this film where we were, AJ was chasing a bird around with the drone, um, <laughs> trying to keep up safely, with it. safely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try, trying to keep up with it, um, from a distance. Um, so yeah, there, there's some playful moments and then, you know, there's the waking up at 7 AM, 6 AM to make sure we catch the sunset, make sure we get the good light. Um, and yeah, just, uh, it, it was a it was full twelve hour days every day. Yeah, that's that's a good point that Kate makes as well in terms of just the logistics of it as well. In terms of we don't have this was all natural lighting. Everything you see was completely natural lighting. We had occasionally we were able to bounce a little bit of light, but it was only by like a three by three uh, bounce board. So we didn't really do a huge amount. It was just a little bit, but. Um, we had to rely on natural light and we had to understand where the sun was rising and the sun was setting and how long we had to do the interview so they looked good and, um, yeah, real challenge, real challenge. Yeah. And well, not only that, but we were on the edge of the mountain and Pacific time zones and our cell phone alarms to wake us up in the morning would switch back and forth. So there were a few... Uh, accidental sleeping in moments but uh one of my favorite things is we the first interview we did with julie weichel on the um uh bluff overlooking the waihee river canyon it took a while just with the strength of the light and the scale of that landscape for me to see that what we were looking at was a river um and one of the things aj talks about is just how good the human eye is and how much he tried to replicate that with cameras but even with my own eyes it, it took a while to realize just what it was that we were looking at and um this is one of those where you have to be out on the landscape to appreciate the scale and how remote it is i don't think we could have gotten to that spot if we hadn't been in julie's massive toyota tundra um it was a it was a pretty rocky rocky ride and we 
actually came back on the runway by mistake, come back into Rome Station. Shout out to Rome Station. That is literally the only place to eat and sleep and get gas within several hundred miles. Yep, it's like a little oasis. It almost kind of reminds me, not that I've ever been there, but it's almost like kind of like Oregon's little own mini outback of just that huge distances between different pockets of civilization and fuel or different things. But navigating that definitely, I can envision being such a challenge. And of course, that idea that from the moment I saw all the different features that were being shown off and the amazing shots that you guys got, what I, I wanted to say, the cinematography was amazing. Thank you. Um, and I could already tell from the moment I saw it is that I thought it was incredible whilst also acknowledging that there's no way that like this is able to do enough justice to it without me seeing it from my own eyes. Yeah, that's that that's a hundred percent. I mean, as as much as we can do with the cameras and the lenses, and which of course, as you were saying before, is a challenge that the landscape is so vast and so deep and so rich, but you would think that you just stick a camera there, but you can't. It's very difficult to try and get the right angles um and the depth of field to be able to capture a lot of that in the frame. And you're right, as as good as job as I can do, it's it's nothing compared to actually being out there and physically looking at these um these landscapes. It just it gives you I've got goosebumps just talking about it and reminiscing about it. Yeah, it's something that, I mean, I've been through Eastern Oregon many times, and it's one of those things that I've always heard. I've heard snippets and little things about these these different features that are that are out there. And it's one of those things that, of course, wherever you live, you don't know what, like, cool things are just right around the corner, so you don't really appreciate them as much. But that does lead into my next question of, what are your guys' hopes for not just this film, but all the rest of the films in your guys' series for bringing awareness and advocacy to these locations and, and some of your goals on uh, what you would like kind of the, the public response to be? Well, that's a really good question. And what we have to do is acknowledge, again, that this effort has been underway for decades. Uh, there has been legislation introduced to protect this area. And one thing that's important about legislation is it's not just a matter of putting legal, legal language on paper. It's a collaborative um, coalition building, stakeholder-based effort to get that input into what would work. So we are building on that, but in a way that I think communicates how special this place is by hearing from folks in, who have a personal connection to the place itself and to actually show people what it looks like. One of the things we've learned in the course of working on these films with AJ is just the power of this medium to have the sound and the visual footage and not just the vast landscapes, but the close looking at a sagebrush. I, we talk about sagebrush so much when uh, visiting landscapes like this and like, why is that an important piece? So I. I actually think that one of the biggest challenges for us is just the editing because there's so much that you want to share, but you want to give people just enough so that they're excited. They want to learn more. They're curious. They maybe want to visit the place, see how they can get involved. Um, one of the things that has given us great pleasure is after we do a film like this, we can then share the scenic footage that AJ shoots with some of the folks who are doing this work or with TV stations so that it has this force multiplier effect. We're going and forward. And it just draws in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that that was a kind of a point or thought that I had when watching the film is that like, man, this is just, it's just a short film that I can imagine that just to edit it down to the size and length that you guys had, you guys probably had to make some tough decisions on what do we keep in? What do we leave out? Where do we put somewhere else? Things like that. I guess that also does move me into it is of course, probably with the, the goal for all of these films is, of course, to, like you said, offer that taste, offer that just a little window into that space and that um, and that specific region and all of like the beauty and wonder within it to also kind of draw in that intrigue and, and interest in the area. Do you guys have any interest at any point as part of your guys' uh, process for filmmaking to create anything longer? Well, and before we answer that, I'd love to go back to your previous question about our, our hopes for the future of this landscape. Oh, yes, sorry. Um, yeah, just following up on what Lauren said and adding to it, the, there are groups that have been working on this for a while, um, and they have transitioned to asking for a national monument designation for this area. Um, that's something the president could do. Um, 
and we hope he does do before leaving office. Um, you had mentioned that m many people in Oregon don't know about this area, but in fact, many people in Idaho do. It's very close to Boise. It's seeing a lot of visitation from Boise. Um, there's resource extraction um, interest, uh, mining interest in this area as well. So there's some pretty real threats of um, uh, you know, disruption to the ecosystem and a national monument designation would really help plan for increased recreation and protect it from extraction. So our hope is for a national monument um, and there are um, two groups who are really leading that effort, the Oregon Natural Desert Association and the Friends of the Owyhee. So if you want to learn more about that, go follow those groups. And then I guess that does lead me because I want to make sure I respect your guys' time. That does lead me into my last question is where can people learn more and find more of these projects and get more information if they do want to immerse themselves more in it and find more about these locations? Well, so speaking broadly about our Road to 30 postcards campaign, that's uh, Road to 30, uh, the letter or the numbers 30.org backslash postcards. That's where you can find the links to all of the films that we've done with AJ, as well as podcasts, blogs, interactive story maps. Uh, I don't know if it's protect the Waihee or protect the uh, but that's the the hub for the, for the campaign. Do you know, Kate? Don't let me. Um, but yeah, if you, if you type in protect Oahe, you'll get there in, um, protect the Oahe. Great. Thank you. Okay. All right. I think that's about does it at least for within the, the time I'm trying to set for myself <laughs> without just completely like force you guys here for like another 45 minutes, but I uh, just want to say thank you guys so much for joining us. It was wonderful to watch your film, and we're really happy to present it at, at the Climate Independent Film Festival. So thank you guys so much. Thanks so much thank for having you. us there at the festival. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, Dylan.